Hi guys, today we're going to look at how to calculate Planck's constant using a limited amount of equipment. Um, we're going to use this, an LED investigations board which has three LEDs on it and a way to vary the voltage that we are putting into the LEDs. It's connected to a power pack which contains four AO batteries and therefore a maximum voltage of six volts going into our LEDs. And to work out how much voltage is actually going into them, we're, looking, we're going to um, use a voltmeter attached to the investigations board. Now this is currently telling us that there is 0.98 volts across the LEDs. Now, if I increase this, you will see that at some point the lights begin to come on. Red first, then green, and eventually blue. Green and blue are not separated by very much. Now, increasing the voltage after that increases the brightness of the LEDs, but below that, below that threshold, none of them produce any light, below their individual threshold. Now we can use this to calculate Planck's constant as long as we know the wavelength of the LEDs. Now, how do we actually do the experiment? Well, firstly, we have to connect all our equipment up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to increase the voltage that comes through the that comes across the LEDs, and then we are going to record at what voltage they come on. So all I need really is a table which says color of LED. and voltage applied to switch on. So, with our red LED, now we're gonna do this a few times and I'm gonna do it different ways. I'm gonna vary the voltage up and record when they come on. I'm also gonna vary the voltage down and record when they go off. The reason for this is because sometimes it's difficult to actually see when the, when the LED is on. It might be on, but just producing a very small amount of light. And we want to make sure that we are seeing that light. And if we can't see it, or if we want a different method to make it more accurate, we're going to go both ways. We're going to go up and see when it comes on. We're going to go down and see when it goes off, just in case that is going to help our, our accuracy. Okay, so I'm going to turn up my voltage, and I'm going to record the voltage. Now I can see the red LED come on about there. I can see a very, very small light. You might not be able to see it if I turn it like that, I'm not sure. But the red light is just about on, and that voltage is 1.58 volts. I'm going to keep turning. You can see the red light get higher. Now this is where it becomes difficult, because I need to look at the green and see when it comes on. Still not on there. Now that's 2.06 volts. I'm going to go up. The blue has already come on a bit too quickly for me to notice at first. Up there, 2.29. Now I happen to know that the green and the blue are very close in wavelength, unlike the red, so it's not surprising they come on so closely. Now as I turn it up, you can see they're all very bright now. I'm going to turn it down, and now what I'm going to record is that when they go off, or when they look like they are off to me. Okay, so 2.28 I get this time which is pretty close to before. Green looks to be off now, 2.0, 2.00 even. And the red, can't quite tell. No, now it's off, I think. And that's 1.43. Now we've got a, our results are fairly similar for the green and the blue in this case, but the red they are not, so they are actually fairly different. Now we were of course going to do this experiment three times and then we're going to come up with the results for each of them and average the voltage in each case. Now to calculate, to find the wavelength of each LED there's a slightly different problem and that's because um, LEDs are made and they're not, they're not always particularly accurate in the um, wavelength. Red LEDs generally have a wavelength of between 620 and 650 nanometers, which means that the wavelength I've chosen today to, to assume that my red LED is, is 635 nanometers. Similar for green, they're in the range, so right in the middle of the range is 535, and blue, although I've written 470, I will change that, because right in the middle of the range again, is 475 nanometers. So now we have a set of results by which we can calculate the average voltage needed to turn on each LED. Now we're going to plot this on a graph of um, voltage against frequency. Now I said wavelength here and we've got the wavelength 
but um, we're going to actually use the frequency of each um, LED. And the reason for this is because the equation that relates frequency and energy is E equals H hef. Um, so to find Planck's constant, we want to do E over F equals H. So the way to do that, if we want on a graph to find the gradient, then you want E being your Y and F being your X. So we're going to plot E on the Y axis, or V in this case, on the Y axis. And on the X axis, we're going to plot the frequency of each LED. Now using the slope of the graph then, we should be able to work out Planck's constant. Okay, so now I've calculated my averages, I've drawn my graph, I've correct, converted everything into the correct units, and I've got a graph that looks like this. Now you can see my points are here, here, and here. That is not in really a straight line. You want them to be in a straight line, but like I said, you don't really know what the actual value of the LED's wavelength is. So you're estimating and hoping that they're in the right values. Now you can see according to this, they don't look like that they are. So what I've done instead is I've drawn two um, best fit lines. Now the best fit is of course, you know, is subjective. It's down to you. What do you think the best fit is? And what I've actually done is I've drawn two. Um, and I assume I could justify both of these. I could justify both of these looking at my data. And because we've only got three points, putting one of them on there would be correct. Putting the other one on there would be equally correct. Now I've got these two lines. I'm going to draw one line in between them. I'm going to assume that these are the two extremes of my measurements that I could justify giving the values for Planck's constant. And I'm going to draw one more line in between them. And I'm going to use the central line to calculate the gradient of the graph and therefore give me an estimate for Planck's constant, and one which should be a fairly accurate estimate. Let's have a look. Okay, so using this graph and the central line of best fit that I've drawn, my estimate for Planck's constant, according to these results, is 7.87 times 10 to the minus 34. Um, this is about 18.7% out from the true value, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. 18.7% um, is not that bad. It might seem like it's a big distance out, but um, physics experiments are often more than that. If you're getting in the correct order of magnitude, then we're looking at the right, we're looking at the right sort of thing. Now, we can reduce these errors further by effectively getting more data points and refining the, ac the actual angle of our line of best fit or being more precise on the wavelengths of our LEDs. Now, that's pretty difficult to do, but if you can find one made by a very good manufacturer who provides very tight specifications, for their LEDs, then you might find one which you can be reliable about the wavelength on. In any case, that is how you determine Planck's constant using LEDs.